Uh, I'd like to uh, talk about guard pages. So, uh, guard pages are something of an overloaded term. Uh, in this context, it's pages that if user land uh, touches them, it generates a fatal signal, and it's something that will be set up by user land. This is uh, typically used uh, by things like a user land allocator or a pthread implementation, where you don't want a buffer overrunning from one thread uh, into another uh, thread's memory. Um, and the way this is set up is the user will mmap uh, regions of memory with prot none set, which means when the fault occurs in that region of memory, the fault handler will look at the VMA, see that it doesn't have access, and then calls a fatal signal. The problem with this is that you end up splitting up memory ranges and having to generate a whole bunch of VMAs. And if you have a large number of threads and a large number of processes, that can add up pretty quickly. And also, you can no longer merge adjacent VMAs that you otherwise would be able to. So uh, this is something that people have actually hit in reality. Um, so it's not a theoretical problem. And uh, it also takes longer to deal with a larger number of VMAs. So we proposed a, uh, a solution to this, which is to take this faulting behavior and take it away from the VMA itself and instead put it in the page tables. And doing this by setting uh, the PTE to have a non-present, non-swap entry that's handled by the swap logic <laughs> that uh, uses a PTE marker, which is a, a technique that's used by actually user fault FD. They have a similar kind of mechanism for simulating hardware memory faults. Um, and then all that does basically is causes the fault handler to say, OK, a fatal signal should arise. And the advantage of doing this is you don't need any additional VMAs whatsoever. And then all of these problems that we've been talking about go away. Um, so the way we've implemented this is via an mAdvise call, where you specify a range via an mAdvise. Uh, this mAdvise guard poison to establish the range. So we, we sort of characterize this as poisoning a memory range. And then also something that, that is very much unlike the uh, other, other forms of poisoning, where you can undo that operation. We call that remedy. And uh, one very nice thing with the way this works as well is that when you do the reverse operation, um, if there's any memory mapped in that range that's not poison markers, it's just left alone. So you can install these uh, poison markers and then safely say, I want every poison marker in that range removed. And, and then you can just do it with one call and nothing else gets touched. Um, we've implemented a, a prototype and we've been uh, testing that. Oh, and one thing to add, you can also use a vector form of MAdvise, process MAdvise to, to set up poison markers in one operation with an IOVEC, which is uh, pretty efficient. So we've done a prototype and the results have been pretty good. Uh, in terms of time spent with these sort of, sort of mapping calls, it's like five times faster because you're just not having to do anywhere near as much. And on a highly, on a idle Android system, uh, unoptimized really for this, but with some changes to so the pthread implementation uses uh, this approach, we've seen 13% fewer VMAs, which actually is a, a pretty big number considering that. With further optimization, it could be considerably more. Um, so I've also now, we've, we've only got two slides, <laughs> so. We are opening this up for discussion more than anything. Um, so I've now got a series ready for RFC uh, that will be coming soon. I was waiting till this talk. Uh, do you have a question? I just want to understand these these guards. Do you have to uh, put them in existing VMAs or are they at the end of VMAs? You have to put them in existing VMAs. Okay, yeah. all right. And so they essentially they they remain part of the VMA and and then if you split or modify the parameter split or merge or whatever it will still stay with whatever VMA is associated with that range mm -hmm. if you unmap it it gets removed um, so it, that, that that yeah that simplifies things so okay. you, but it does mean that if you want to have a range you have to kind of extend the VMA a little bit yeah. further yeah so the idea is it stops you or it helps prevent you accidentally running out of your VMA it kind of comes just before that yeah yeah, yeah. Or, or you may have like a whole. You have, may have a. V, I mean, it may end up being a large VMA that contains multiple processes or threads. Uh, and blocks how would of this work for like file-backed memory? A map of file. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're simplifying things at this point. We're just we're keeping it simple and, and keeping it anonymous only. But in future, there there are 
things to think about with the file backed and shared memory potentially. So for now, we're we're for the initial RFC. It's just going to be anonymous only. That's yeah. I think that's. Yeah, too much of a limitation. There should be a good plan to handle file-back memory. Well, I mean, well. the the idea is uh, that we can iterate on this. Yeah. So in in future, we can expand what it what it can support. Yeah, but then I just wonder what the semantics will be like. You know, if you're m mapping a file, but then you need a bit of extra space for a guard as part of the same BMA. Yeah, it, with file, there's definitely complications that. When, 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 you, when you say a non, do you, do you mean um, just a non, or, or if you do a non and shared, which we know is magically transformed into being backed by Shemem, yeah. is that supported or not? No, it is purely just a, a non, no Shemem at all. <laughs> this, is just for, this is just for the first iteration, obviously. We probably want to expand it going forward. Uh, yeah, just uh, two, two quick questions. Um, for the architecture support, Adding a PTE bit is that only needed in the non-present case? Uh, no, th th this should work across architectures. It's, uh, I mean, actually, what what do you mean? So I'm just worried because we're running short on bits in the in the page table. Oh no, yeah, there's no extra bit. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, that's what I thought, right? Okay, so basically, so it's like a swap entry, but then you set a field to say it's PTE marker, and then you perfect. use. A yep. part of that to say which PT marker that's okay. It. And then the second thing is, what's the get user pages behavior on one of these? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it would fail. Actually, the get user for, for something like populate, it would just result in an error. Okay. Yeah. Because it does specifically check for that. It's good that I wrote the code for this, so I, I know that. So, so today you can sort of already do this. User Vault FD has UFFDIO Poison, which I'm installs. Aware of it. Right. So. Is the behavior that you want the same as that, or do you want like a different kind of poison? Yeah, it's different. It, firstly, that, that simulates hardware poisoning only, all right? and, and then you're going to get unwanted behavior. For instance, with, if you have config memory failure, you're going to have a ton of things in DMS, you, and, and the fault handler is going to treat it like a hardware memory fault. Also, I, I'm not sure on the reverse operation and the semantics so, of that. M and V don't FFD. need would reverse. Uh, would reverse the we don't actually, yeah, we don't actually want necessarily want the don't need to reverse because yeah, exactly. that would be kind of say, unexpected. You probably want to avoid that too. And um, actually, in the uh, RFC implementation on don't need, we we don't get rid of poison markers. I so you make a new PT marker for your poison versus yeah. the UFDO. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Right. And, and the reason for not using user fault FD is because it is additional overhead and yeah. if you if you mark a, a VMA or part of it use the full ID, it leads to splitting and so this should be very um, hi I, I I was just uh so I didn't see the RFC on the mailing list. It's um, not. It's not up there yet. Uh, oh, okay. It'll um, be there soon. <laughs> I, I was just gonna say uh, you commented that uh, it's uh, vectorized. Did I get that right? There's a the process M advice call. Yeah. You, you can. It needs it needs some modification, uh, actually, for it to be useful, which I'm gonna upstream as well. Okay, and I I was just gonna comment that um I think that's really dope, um Thank and you. Uh, I actually think that it ties in. I looked ahead in the schedule. There's another talk coming up next about um, M advised like a lazy don't need or lazy free. And, and there, a very long time ago, I saw uh, an RFC get posted. I think it was like kernel 419 or something like that. A very long time ago, somebody posted an RFC for a vectorized uh, M advise uh, system call that would allow you to do lots of different M advise operations, but with uh, with just vectors of addresses and ranges to affect at once to minimize like the amount of overhead for processing all of those at once. Yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, this exists, it, but it's, the current implementation is it's designed for other processes, things like a uh, user land uh, reclaim, uh, or, sorry, out of memory uh, code. So, so the that needs adapting in order to use it on the same process. But that does that currently exists. It's not very well known, I don't think. Process underscore M advice. Cool. So we're just going to adapt that to make it so you can do the same thing on the same process. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm familiar with the system call. I just, I just meant that I think it's cool that you're taking that approach for this. And yeah. I hope in uh, the next talk to ask basically exactly the same question about vectorized M advice V for reducing the number of TLB shootdowns, because uh, vectorizing M advice calls for 
presumably this use case is for setting up guard areas for v for VMs or something like that. I, I don't know exactly what you're using it for, but that's what I would guess, something like that. And being able to uh, unmap all of those without generating TLB flushes or being able to generate the mappings with just a huge vector up front with a, few, a fewer number of calls, like both of those things I think are related and are would be really dope to be able to do vectorized. Oh, cool. cool. Can you hear me? Oh, Lorenzo. Hi. Uh, naming is hard, and you knew this question <laughs> would pop up. <laughs> oh, come on. Like, uh, like can, can we at least, like, poison, using poison well, just sucks. But if you're going to call it poison, can we call it unpoison, not remedy? Or it's well, just like something. We have, there's, we have a certain sentimental attachment to these names. But I did, I compromised. So David uh, objected in the past on, on this on, in discussion. But each of these have guard underscore M advise guard poison, M advise guard remedy. So it's pretty clear what it's well, well, referring can, can, to. Can you just, I, I'm a native speaker. Why, why not unpoison? Why remedy? I, I'm, I'm just curious because to me it doesn't make sense, but I, I assume it makes sense to you. <laughs> Lorenzo, you, you, know you, can, you can actually uh, pull, pull up a YouTube video if you need to demonstrate so I would to David say, why it's do you, Have this. you ever listened to The, the Prodigy? <laughs> <laughs> I There's a, not. Should I do that? I'll send you a YouTube link and you understand. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> if, if it takes a YouTube video, maybe unpoison. <laughs> Just saying. We could have maybe a, like both. <laughs> yeah. So, so hey, Lorenzo. Um, so I'm really curious about the Sig bus versus Sig Seg V question. Uh, I yeah. don't know what the right answer is, and I'm curious if anyone has any ideas. Yeah. So yeah, we I kind of listed a few possible things that may come up in discussion anyway and on the list anyway. But um, yeah, right right now, I, I, like the memory, like the UFFD uh, poisoning will result in a SIG bus. But I, I would argue a that. segment fault probably makes more sense in this case. But it's a little bit debatable. At the moment, the RSC uses a segment fault. I, I would say it should be the same as if th there were no VMA there. Yeah, exactly. Right. That makes sense, yeah. Am I making the correct assumption that if you poison and then unpoison or remedy a page, the, the contents are discarded? Yep. Yeah, so when, if there's any contents on poison, it's zapped, so it's removed. Does that mean like the, the page is freed and then you must allocate a new page to un, uh, unpoison? Uh, no, when, when you so when you remedy, it will it's clear the it will clear the sorry unpoison. <laughs> it will uh, it will clear the entry, and then when you next fault, it would allocate. It would you know do the same thing as if you just mapped a range. So if it's read, it'd be to the zero page. If it's right, it'll allocate a page. And it's all a non anonymous memory at this point. So that's all we think about right now. The reason why unpoison is uh, or remedy is the wrong word, right? Because you don't get your data back. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like you've been chatting with David. <laughs> why not do something like how Ember, like Emprotect prot none, you can undo that and get your data back? Why not do something but better? then you'd have the VMA, you, yeah, you get a new VMA, that, which you're trying to avoid. It, so there's no way to do something close to Protonon without having to have a separate VMA? No. But this, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the whole goal. So the reason we cannot uh, keep the data is because then we would have to like have uh, still have the, the PFN in the PTE and then Protonon and then it's too many interpretations like Numa balancing uses that, so the marker is the simplest way, but then you need to discard the data. 